Income Tax 2020. Adjustments to Income IRA Deduction. Come in, relax with Income Tax 2020. Adjustments to Income IRA Deduction. When we're thinking about the income tax equation, we're going to be on the second line, that being the adjustments to income. We consider our income tax equation and break it out into two halves. The first half basically being a modified income statement. The bottom half then being the calculation of the tax and then application of the payments and credits to get down to the tax refund or the tax due. We're focusing here on the top half, basically the income statement. In prior presentations or a prior section, we talked about what would be included in this top line income and what would not be included in income for tax purposes. Now we're looking at deductions. We could call these above the line deductions, adjustments to income, schedule one deductions, adjust or deductions for adjusted gross income. I'll typically refer to them as above the line deductions as opposed to and compared to or contrasted to the greater of either the standard deductions or the itemized deductions. So we're going to be considering a, a component of these adjustments to income, probably one of the most common components and one that most tax preparers will be asking questions about to their to their clients even up until the tax preparation uh, deadline and possibly being able to do some planning even all the way up to when you're actually doing the tax return. Here is the form 1040. I know it's a little small here, but I want to see the whole 1040 on one page so we can see the context of it. We'll see it in more detail when we do the practice problem in tax software in the following presentation. We're going to be concentrating down here on line 10, the 6,000, the 6,000 being the decrease from the total income and then resulting in us getting to the adjusted gross income. The 6,000 then being supported by the Schedule 1. This is part two of the Schedule 1, which is, of course, the adjustments to income concentrating down here on line 19 the IRA deduction now the IRA deduction just to give a little bit of context to it while you do the data input and planning there's kind of two components to the IRA you got the data input and then basically the planning for it so if someone has an IRA they might not have any and they've contributed to an IRA then they may not have any documentation for that. So that's one thing you might not be looking at a form and say, hey, there's a, there's a 1099 that tells me I have to put money into an IRA. Not necessarily the case. So you're going to want to be asking every time, did you put money into an IRA uh, if they qualify to put money into an, an IRA? And it's also something that you could do tax planning for just like you can for a retirement plan and putting money into like a 401k or something like that. But it's something that you typically have more time to do the tax plan and you can actually do tax planning all the way up to the point in time that you file the return oftentimes due to the fact that the contribution into the IRA is typically not due until filed or until the due date of uh, the return, not including extensions. So if you're doing tax returns for people that are basically on time, then the software will typically help you out to determine uh, whether or not they could have benefited from putting money into an IRA and you may be able to at that point in time suggest putting money into an IRA. So that's a typical kind of thing uh, for tax preparation that you're always going to have that in the back of your mind. You complete the tax return. You say, OK, is it possible that this person could still put money into an IRA? Is that something I want to bring up and suggest to give a little bit more value in the tax preparation with some tax planning even up until the point in time? Uh, we actually enter the tax return. Now, to get the IRA in context, you want to kind of think of it in context of other type of retirement accounts as well or other type of retirement plans. The government is going to try to incentivize us to save for retirement. That's the whole point of these basically retirement type plans. In other words, if the government was not to incentivize us to, to save with these kind of tax benefits, we would still save. You'd still put money into hopefully some kind of investment, stocks and bonds, so that you had money at retirement. <laughs> but uh, the government's trying to give us more incentive to do that by giving us a tax benefit. So in other words, uh, you don't have to save for retirement by putting money into an IRA or a 401k plan. You can put money into any account you want to save for retirement. The reason you put money in into an IRA or a 401k plan or a 403b plan is because the government gives you a tax incentive to do that. So you're actually restricting your money. You're restricting your access to the money because if you take the money out early or not in accordance with the, the rules, you get penalized for it. So you're actually restricting you know, your access to the money in exchange for basically tax benefit 
uh, at the point in time you put the money in. So that's the basic concept. Now, normally, uh, oftentimes they kind of rely on the employer to provide the retirement plans. So if you have an employer that provides, say, a 401k plan or a 403b plan or something like that, then you put money into the 401k or 403b plan and your employer basically takes care of the entire thing in terms of the reporting of it. And when you then have the W-2, so if you have the W-2, then it's already been excluded. That income's already been excluded from box one. And therefore this box one, which is W-2 income on the tax return, will already be deducted by the amount of the contributions to say a 401k plan because it's been in, it was, it was done within the W-2. So what if someone doesn't have access to a 401k plan? That's typically where the government is then saying, hey, we should give these people a business benefit in a similar way. We can't take it directly out of line one of the W-2 income uh, if it's not offered by the employer, but we can give you a deduction for AGI, which is why this can kind of be considered as adjustments to income. These, some of these are kind of adjustments that uh, if you, like if you were an employer, it would have just not been included in box one. But now we have a deduction, or you can think of it as like a decrease in the income to get to the adjusted gross income, which is going to be the IRA. So now we have this IRA here that could be benefiting. So if you're talking about someone who doesn't have a 401k plan, then for sure you're going to be saying, okay, uh, you might want to put money into an IRA because that's a huge tax you know, deduction or at least tax deferral that you can that you can be taking advantage of now if they don't have w-2 income and they have a uh, schedule c income then again they could still put money into then they might they might be able to put money into an ira or they might be able to set up like a simple or something like that another type of retirement account in order to put more money in the the problem with the ira is typically that it's restricted so you can you're, you have a lower restriction of how much money you can put into it than you could into a 401k plan or possibly something some other kind of plan with, that would be related to your self-employment income like a SEP or a simple so it's kind of like the last resort it's the last option for the retirement plan if you don't have access typically to a 401k plan or to a simple now where things get a little bit messy here is that if what if somebody is is um, they do have access to a retirement plan but they didn't put a lot of money into it or whatnot. Can you still put money into an IRA? Meaning you took advantage of a retirement plan, got a tax benefit for that, and it reduced the amount of possibly uh, the amount of line one on the tax return here. Can I still take an, take an IRA and put more money into an IRA and get a tax benefit there? So there's kind of rules related to that. That's when it gets a little bit tricky and tax software really helps with that. And then two, well, what if I'm married, you know, and my spouse basically has access to a 401k plan in, at their work, but I don't have access to a 401k plan. Uh, what's the rules then in terms of, of the IRA? Can I still put money into an IRA? What if we have two people and, they're, and they're, they're married? How much money can I put into the IRA? So you want to know the caps on the IRA. You want to know the general rule. And the general rule is that if you have access to a 401k plan, you want to take advantage of the 401k plan and not be dependent on the IRA. And the amount you could put into the IRA will typically or oftentimes be limited uh, if you have access to a, to a 401k plan. So let's go into it a little bit more detail and it'll make more sense when we actually kind of run scenarios in the following presentation uh, to see what these scenarios look like. So introduction IRA, individual retirement arrangements, advantages. You may be able to deduct some or all your contributions to it uh, depending on your circumstances. That's the point. So if you put money into an IRA, the reason you, you want to put it in there and be restricted is because you're getting a tax benefit. Main, uh, one of the big tax benefits is, is if it's a traditional IRA, when you put the money in, then you, you don't have to include it in income or you get what I would call the above the line deduction for it. So generally amounts in your IRA, including earnings and gains, aren't taxed until they are distributed. So that's going to be the general rule. When you put the money into the IRA, not taxed. So the IRA, now it's under the umbrella of, of an IRA and therefore not taxed until you take the money out. And that's when it's going to be taxed. So you can think of the IRA, it's, it's not different than any other kind of investment. You're still typically going to be putting it into stocks and bonds as the most average or normal kind of investments that you would be putting into just like you would if it weren't under an IRA, but then it's under the umbrella of an IRA. 
So, so that means that you're not basically going to be, uh, you're not going to be taxed on it basically until you take the money out of the IRA at basically retirement time. And that's the point. That's, that's, that deferral is the benefit you're getting from the IRA. So you can open and make contributions to a traditional IRA if you or if file a joint return, your spouse received taxable compensation during the year and uh, you weren't age 70 and a half by the end of the year. So if you're over 70 and a half, the, the IRS, the government's basically saying, hey, you're not saving for retirement anymore at that point in time. You're in the age that we would consider retirement and therefore, you know, you, you know, no more putting money in and getting the back tax benefit of putting it into the IRA. So you can have a traditional IRA whether or not uh, you are covered by any other retirement plan. However, you may not be able to deduct all your contributions if you or your spouse it is covered by an employer retirement plan. See how much you can deduct later. So if you're covered by another retirement plan, in other words, at your work, you have a 401k plan, uh, or your spouse at the work has a 401k plan, then you may have limitations in terms of how much you could put into the IRA because you can kind of think of the IRA as something that's basically put in place for those who don't have access to a 401k plan in general. So it starts to be limited if you have access to the 401k plan. For tax planning purposes, if you have someone that has access to a 401k plan, your advice would be, hey, if you have any extra cash, typically you, you would want to take advantage of the 401k plan because it's a huge uh, benefit that is offered and and you know you could typically benefit from that obviously if you don't have cash if you if someone doesn't have the the cash flow to do it then they're not going to be able to take advantage of of the benefits for it and that's kind of the point that the iris is trying to do they're trying to make you uh, give you an incentive to take money aside and put it into a retirement account one that is basically locked and then they're going to incentivize you not to take it out by penalizing you uh, if you do until the point in time of retirement so contribution limits Contribution limit for 2019 and 2020 and 2021 is 6,000 or 7,000 if you're age 50 and older. So we have 6,000. So if you're single and you, and you don't have access to some other plan or something, you may put up to 6,000 that you can get basically a tax benefit from, basically a deduction or an above the line deduction for. If you're married and then the two individuals, you know, we're, we're taking out the idea of you have access to a retirement plan, then they could put both put 6,000 in to their own and, and get a benefit on their joint filing joint tax return of the 12,000. If you're age, if 7,000, if you're age 50 or older, so you got like the added amount that you can put in because the IRS is basically thinking if you're closer to retirement and you need to put more money in, they're trying to give it, give access or the ability to put more money in so that you can, you can be where you need to be for retirement in terms of the savings account. Now note that this limit is typically far lower than what many people can put into like a 401k plan if they had access to it. So if you had a 401k plan, you may have the ability to put more than that in and get a better and get more of a tax benefit by doing that because it would be removed then from box one of the W-2. And if you had your own business and you're making good money on your own business on a Schedule C business, you might be able to put more in if you had access to like a simple or something, some other type of, of retirement plan that's going to be geared towards a small business, like a SEP or a SIMPLE. So the annual contribution limit for 2015, 16, and 17, so once again, 2015, 16, and 17, and 18, is 5,500 or 6,500 uh, if you're age 50 or older. So your Roth IRA contributions may also be limited based on your filing status and income. Now, notice the Roth IRA is also an option that you can put money into a Roth IRA. The thing with a Roth IRA is that it's, it's not typically something that's, that's really going to affect you with your tax data input because it's not something you're going to typically deduct at the point in time that it's, you're going to be putting money into the Roth IRA. And so, therefore, it's, it might not have an impact on just your data input for the tax return if they put money into a Roth IRA, unlike a traditional IRA. But for tax planning purposes... The Roth IRA is something you want to be aware of, and they, people might ask you questions about a Roth IRA. What's the difference between a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA? So the traditional IRA, note that you're putting money in and you're getting the deduction at this point in time. The Roth IRA, basically, you're not getting the deduction at this point in time, but you're not going to be taxed on it when you take the money out. So you're saying, I'm going to be taxed on it now, and I'm going to get the benefit later. Whereas on the traditional IRA, you're getting the benefit now, 
and then you're going to be taxed on it later when the money comes out. Which one of these would be better? It just depends on the circumstances. Oftentimes, the traditional IRA, like if you're dealing with someone who's, who's making good money at this point in time, if they're like 40 years old and they're at the prime of their, of their income uh, that they're going to be making probably over their lifetime, then they're probably at the highest tax brackets that they will be at. And you're probably thinking, I would like to take the deductions now because I want to lower the income at this point in time where I might be at the highest point of the taxes at this point. And then later on in retirement, when they take the money out, maybe if they, re if they plan well, maybe they have other income that's not subject to tax and they can basically have lower taxable income at that point in time or just be living on less at that point in time. And therefore, it might be okay to have the taxes later. It might be a benefit to tax later also because of the time value of money you'd, you'd like to lower the taxes now rather than later so that's the general thought of a of a traditional ira now you might think that well well maybe i don't trust the government right now or something like that and if and later on when i retire it could be quite possible that the tax rates are ridiculously high you know maybe they're going to be like 90 percent tax rates by that time because of just craziness right so in that case you might say okay well then i'm going to put money into a roth ira so that I, I don't pay the taxes now. And then if there's some craziness that happens and the tax rates are 90% at the point I, I retire, then I shouldn't have to pay taxes on it unless they change that law too, you know, and I should, and, and you, that could benefit you there. Or if you're in a circumstance where you have a low year, you're saying, hey, I don't have a lot of taxable income right now. My tax rate's pretty low because of the uh, progressive tax rates. I'm, I'm pretty low on the progressive tax rate because my income's not high or my taxable income's not high. I think I might actually be higher when I take the money out at retirement. So, so if I'm not paying a lot of taxes, I, I would still like to get a benefit of the, of the retirement plan. So I might choose a Roth then. I'll choose a Roth, I'll pay the taxes now. And then at the retirement, I won't pay the taxes later. I'm fine paying the taxes now because I don't make a lot of money or I don't have a lot of taxable income at this point. And so uh, it's okay to put money in. And that might be the case for people that are, maybe you're, you're going to school or something like that and you're working a little bit. So you might say, hey, I don't pay a lot of taxes, but I have some cash. I could put money into like a retirement account. It doesn't help me a whole lot to put money into a, a normal IRA because you know I'm at a fairly low tax rate maybe I'll put money into a Roth IRA uh, under those circumstances if I have the cash flow to do so. Okay, so the 2020 IRA contribution and deduction limits affect, effect of modified AGI on deductible contributions if you are covered by a retirement plan. So here's the basic, the, the kind of rules that if you're covered by a retirement plan. So what if I'm covered by a retirement plan by my work? Can I still put money into then an IRA and get the benefit there as well? Now this is again somewhere where the tax software can help you because obviously you may not know where someone stands really until you do the tax return and then the software can kind of help you out to see whether or not you can put more money into an IRA and that's why it's nice to do your taxes before the due date because then you got that tax planning and you might have even a little bit more time to do that to put the money into an IRA. So if your filing status is single or head of household uh, and your modified AGI is 65,000 or less a full deduction up to the amount uh, of your contribution limit. So then you can put the full thing in, which would typically be like the 6,000 if you're single or head of household and you're making less than 65,000, even if you have access to a 401k plan. If you have more than 65,000, but less than 75,000, then it starts to taper off. So now you've got that income limitation. Notice the income limitations being based on the AGI, adjusted gross income. So partially deducted. If you're making over 75,000 and you're single or head of household, then and you have access to a 401k plan you can't put any more money into an ira the, the government says that's enough no more so married filing jointly or a qualifying widow widower so married filing joint then you can put 104,000 if you have 104,000 or less of your modified agi so you're adjusting gross income notice it says modified up here again modified one of the things that might could most likely modified by is the 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 ira deduction so when you say modified AGI, adjusted gross income, you're typically looking at the adjusted gross income as, you know, the main number. The modifications to it are typically, you know, small kind of adjustments normally to the AGI. So, so notice you're basically thinking income levels here when you're thinking about these, uh, when you're thinking about these phase outs, which would be the adjusted gross income line. 
So we got the 104,000 or less, a full deduction up to the amount of your contribution, more than 104,000, but less than 124,000. That's when it starts to phase out for married couples or qualified widow, widower, and that's a partial deduction. And then if it's over 124,000 or more, then you're not going to be able to put any more money into an IRA if you have access to a 401k plan. So then we have married filing separately. So if you have less than 10,000, you can have a partial deduction and more 10,000 or more, no deduction. So notice there's a huge kind of penalty here or reduction in the capability based on married filing separately. Again, the IRS is kind of skeptical. You can see them as being kind of skeptical about someone being married and then saying and saying they want to file married filing separately simply to take advantage of one kind of tax break or another such as possibly putting more money into a retirement plan so they often will severely limit some of the some of the deductions or credits especially those that are subject to phase outs